The opposite of self-conscious is spontaneity. What makes you self-conscious? It's when you think everybody is looking at you and then you don't remember how to be a human anymore. You don't know what to do with your hands, you don't remember how to walk or breathe. You feel like an alien in a human costume and you, and you just don't know how to function anymore. So how do you get back to spontaneity? How do you take the focus off of yourself, right? So that you're not only into yourself. <laughs> Walking to the chair is one of those actor tricks. If you don't know it, it's really hard. Hey, I'm Annalise Bianchini. This is my spot on class about how to be comfortable in front of the camera. So today we're gonna to talk about mind, body, and technical setup. It is nearly impossible to separate your mind from your body as it is all your instrument and should be functioning harmoniously. And what you think uh, influences your body and your, what you do with your body influences your mind. But I wanna try and break it down for you uh, really clearly so that you can go back to the list and check it off next time you're on camera. Remember when you were little and you play pretend and you were talking to your teddy bear or your pet stone and they were listening to you and you were telling them about things and you were communicating with them. This is what I want you to do now with the camera. You've done it before so you can do it again. Focus on the goal of communication, and then your body will relax and take care of itself. You'll remember how to breathe, you'll remember how to think. Forget about the script, and just say what you wanna say. And then, add how you feel about it. If you're not used to being in front of the camera, it can feel like a hostile, foreign environment. You can feel really unnatural, like you're talking to this cold, inanimate object that doesn't care about you and probably actually dislikes you further. How do you deal with that? How, how do you handle that? If you're completely new to this, what do you do? How do you remember to be human and to breathe and to get your point across, get your message out to the people? You have to have a real conversation you have to pretend to have a real conversation. <laughs> um, you have to take your focus off of yourself and put it onto your scene partner, which is your camera, or something right next to the camera, maybe a teddy bear, if you have a teddy bear at hand that helps you focus. So it can be really uh, difficult, I can totally trip you up if you, feel like you are beginning from a void, <laughs> from just randomness, like a blank slate, it's super strange. So I really recommend um, freeing up your mind, like go off script a little bit. So what I always do for my scene study classes, I lead the actors on a guided meditation before they get up and do their work. And this brings them into the room you know, it brings their full selves into the room. They are grounded, they're breathing, and it's kind of a warm up for your imagination. So I really recommend doing this before you start. And if you go to the Spot On website, you can find a guided meditation to download for yourself and use before your next on-camera session, even just for rehearsal. It can be really helpful. Imagine you're having a coffee date with your friend and you have something important to say. You speak to them for about say three to six minutes and the whole time you stare at them. Would that be awkward? Yeah, that'd be awkward. Don't do that. This is what we call colloquially eye fucking. Don't do the eye fucking. 
This is your homework. Next time you're in a conversation, put a little bit of your attention onto what your eyes are doing. How much do you actually look at the person you're talking to and when? Is it when you are listening uh, or when there's a more intimate moment? Could be. Um, see how I take my eyes away from you when I'm thinking. I have a thought over here and then I come back to you. And I have a thought over here and I come back to you. And then it's like we're having a conversation. And then when you go into rehearsal, which is you in your office space, your room, whatever, with your camera, your setup, um, and you're practicing being in front of the camera because this is a relationship that you do need to practice, remember that, remember how you were having a conversation with your friend. And just do that again with the camera. Know thyself. <laughs> to thine own self be true. Embrace your mode of being. If you are a, an outgoing person, a bubbly person, with lots of fireworks going off, that's great. Um, you may need to uh, adjust on camera for that because it might look too big or it might look perfect, either way. What kind of a person are you? Be that person in front of the camera. Be that person and then conjure forth happiness, confidence, passion about what you're talking about, joy. And that, that will get your message across. Don't try to be anything but yourself on camera. Otherwise, what we will be seeing is you trying to be somebody else on camera and then we'll be like, why are they doing that? Just be yourself. It is good enough. It's great. However you are is good. We want to see you anyways. And be the you that's having a great day. Be the you that's super confident and passionate about what they're talking about. This will get the message across fine. Even if you are a little quieter, that's also powerful. Sometimes that's even more powerful. See what I, if I, um, if I do this and I whisper a little bit, it draws you in, right? So that can be something you can use. Sometimes what can be really helpful is to shake out your system between takes because otherwise you get kind of stiff and kind of focused and you want to remember that you can relax and have fun. Um, so get up and do a little dance. Shake your hands. And jump around a little bit. Shake out. Shake out. And then take that deep belly breath to focus back into your body, into your chair, and ground yourself. Remember to surprise yourself and have fun and keep having fun so that when we see you, we see you having fun and then we have fun and then we want to keep watching you. We're like, oh, this person's having fun. That's awesome. What's happening next? We went over mind and body and now we're going to look at your technical setup. So. First thing, lighting. You really want good lighting. You want lighting that evenly illuminates your face. So no shadows from this side, no shadows from this side. The best lighting is gonna be natural light. So if you can find a window in your house or in your office that shines directly upon you, that is perfect. If you can't find natural lighting, a ring light is great or a soft box light if you wanna really invest and make this super, super spiffy. Next is a uh, background. So think of your background as a minor supporting character. You can have something that's very neutral, a white background something or something with color that's very flattering. Um, it's just a wall that totally works. Uh, or you could be in your environment, you know, your home or your office, as long as there's not too much clutter or any cats running around because cats will always upstage you and you will, no one will listen to you. They'll just be watching your cat. Um, I kind of like when there's um, something behind you that we can see, something about, of your environment. It kind of gives us a little idea of who you are. Okay, so next is your outfit. 
So if your background is a minor supporting character, think of your outfit as your subtext. What do you want to say without saying it? What do you want to get across without actually speaking it? Wear what's comfortable, wear what's natural, um, wear what accentuates the role that you're playing. You probably don't want to give a business pitch in your boxers. And when you're choosing your outfit, make sure that it goes with your background because everything that we see is part of the story that you're telling. So for your camera, you can use your smartphone, your iPhone. Those are all fantastic. They're all going to work. Uh, make sure that the lens is not smudged. So many times have I had to throw away a complete take because there was a smudge on the lens and it all looked blurry. I highly recommend getting a tripod. Uh, I used to just build a tower out of books and things in my apartment to rest my camera on. And that was such a pain. <laughs> and you want to make sure that your setup is easily recreatable because that will eliminate stress. And that's the thing you want to eliminate the most. Uh, a standard on-camera frame is about mid-upper chest to a few inches above your head. This is probably, this is kind of your standard frame. And it's nice because we really want to see you. We want to see your face, we want to see your eyes. Last thing is your script. This usually includes who you are, what you are, and why. Uh, make sure you have a pretty clear idea of those bullet points. And maybe have those bullet points in, in reach so you can refer back to them as much as you want. So we talked about your mind, we talked about your body, we talked about tactical setup, and how all of these things influence each other to form a whole, the whole story that you are telling. So this is my Spot On class. I hope that you had fun. Remember to check out the Spot On website for more information and to download the meditation and use it before your next on-camera session.